All right, guys, we're going to talk today about rates and converting rates. Um, so this one I know I don't have in your notebook, but we're going to fill it out, and it's going to go next to the one um, that we're going to do tomorrow. So um, on the front here, when we're talking about rates, it's super important that we actually talk about unit rates. Um, sometimes so like a rate can be something like uh, the speed that you're driving so you know on my way to school I was driving 25 miles per hour so miles per hour is a rate or another type of rate is like how much money you earn um, so like if you start a part-time job and you're earning minimum wage then your rate is 9.65 Per hour so that's how much money you make per hour and really all of those are unit rates because it's all condensed down to one thing so like for miles per hour that's how many miles I'll travel in one hour for dollars per hour that's how much money I'll earn in one hour and having a unit rate is super important because then I can compare things um, more fairly okay so a unit rate is when your denominator the bottom of the fraction is equal to one because really what a rate is is a fraction reduced um, but in the case of a unit rate we want to reduce down to a denominator of one even if that means we get a decimal which sometimes <laughs> makes me a little uncomfortable when we're talking about these because I prefer fractions but that's okay so let's take a little try here so if we open this one up and take a look at our unit rates um, like I said having a unit rate is really good for making comparisons to see maybe which thing is best so in this case we're like shopping at a t-shirt shop and they have one table maybe that's displaying you can buy two of these t-shirts for $25 and so my unit rate here when I write my fraction we want our units on the bottom and so the units that we're counting are number of shirts and so that means dollars has to go on top and so to figure out deal one we'll do $25 divided by two which is 12.50. Then maybe I see another table somewhere else that's advertising the deal. You'll get four shirts for $45. And so if I do $45 divided by four, we get 11.25, which is a slightly better deal. And I get more shirts, so that's nice. But deal three at a different table is showing that you'll get three shirts for $30, which is the best deal because that's $10 per shirt. And so the best deal here is deal three, where I could get three shirts for $30 or each shirt is $10 because that's kind of the cheapest one for each shirt. Okay. Now another example of that could be what is the better buy six bagels for three dollars and 29 cents or eight bagels for four dollars and 15 cents so a lot like the last one because we're comparing um money to units like how many bagels or like how much is each bagel worth and so just like this last unit right here that's what we want to do for this one as well so we'll do three dollars 29 cents divided by six and here's something where like I could kind of do these deals in my head this one is a little bit trickier so you know on some of these we might have to use our calculator and sometimes the numbers get real big so just kind of have to so if I type in 329 divided by six and then because this is money I want to actually look at the third place pass so the 10,000 spot to see if I should round up or down. And because it's an eight, I do want to round up. So 55 cents for each of these bagels. And then 
I want to go over here and try this one out to see what this unit rate is. And so if I do 415 divided by 8, so 415 divided by 8, that's 52 cents. And that is the better deal. So getting eight bagels is kind of the better deal here um, because it is cheaper per bagel. But maybe if you don't need that many bagels, you don't want to be wasteful. I don't know, something to think about. Now, another thing that we like to talk about when we are talking about rates or unit rates is maybe if I need to convert a rate to a different one. Now, this table over here is just a whole bunch of information of how I convert one thing to another or how those things are related. So like one foot is the same thing as 12 inches, which I feel like we know. And like kind of one more that I want to add here is actually that one mile is equal to 5,280 feet. I feel like that's one that we um, often make. And now the nice thing about this, you guys, is when you're trying to convert one unit to another, you can use any of these equal things to write any fraction you want. So like for instance, this one cup to eight fluid ounces, I could write that as one cup over eight fluid ounces, or I can write it the other way. So eight fluid ounces to one cup. But it is important that I always keep the number with its unit. So like one is always going to go with cup and eight is always going to go with fluid ounces. The reason flipping the fractions is important is so that I can convert the right way. So I'm going to try a couple examples because I think it'll make more sense that way. So for example, here we're going to take 330 minutes and convert it to hours. So because I'm just going from one thing to another, I take this 330 minutes and I'm going to throw that over one. And I'm going to multiply that by any fraction uh, that I can to hopefully change minutes to hours. So really I have to think like, can I compare minutes to hours? And I can because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So kind of our thing here is one hour equals 60 minutes. And when I want to write that as a fraction, I want to make sure that my minutes divide out from each other and I'm left with just hours. So like when I multiply fractions, I can do this thing where I cross cancel. So because I have minutes on top here, I want minutes to go on bottom so that they will cross cancel out and hours will just be left on top. And so then I put the numbers where they're supposed to be. So like the one goes with hours, the 60 goes with minutes. And so when I look here, if I were to just multiply these fractions, I would multiply straight across the top and straight across the bottom. Or I can cross cancel like I did with the minutes and I can cancel out the zeros for a 10. And like three goes into both of these, two times here and 11 times there. And so I end up with 11 over two or 5.5 hours. Okay, so another one to try like that is if I take five, foot, uh, five feet three inches to all inches. So kind of I don't need to change the three inches. They're already in inches. I really just need to take the minute, or the, I was reading up here, the feet to the inches. Okay, so we're going to take five feet, throw it over one, and multiply that hopefully just by one fraction where I can compare inches to feet. And I can compare inches to feet. One foot is 12 inches. And I want the feet to go away. So I'm going to put feet on the bottom, inches on top, 1 and 12. Now this one, the feet divide out, but I am not going to divide any of the numbers because actually the bottom's all 1. And so we're just going to times 5 times 12 for 60 inches. But I have to bring that 3 over and add it to it for a total of 63 inches. Now you might be thinking, like, I can do this way faster. You'd probably be right. I just want to go slow because this next one here is a little bit more intense. So if I have an athlete that ran a sprint of 100 feet in 3.1 seconds, at what speed was the athlete running in miles per hour? 
So the reason that this one is slightly trickier is because we're trying to take feet to miles, but I'm also trying to take seconds to minute or to hours. Oops, even harder. And the reason that that's trickier is because I'm taking uh, two units and converting them to two other units. Here I was just going one to one. Okay, so that makes this a little trickier. But I can still start with the units that they give me. So 100 feet over 3.1 seconds, because we want to go feet per second, because we're going miles per hour. And I'm going to multiply this by a fraction, probably a lot of fractions. Again, I set this guy up this way because I had two units that I was comparing, feet to seconds. These other ones just were over one because I wasn't comparing it to another unit. And so let's do one at a time here. Maybe let's deal with our feet first. So if I'm trying to go from feet to miles, I want to look up here to see if I have a conversion that goes from feet to miles. And luckily we do. And so because I want the feet to divide out, I'm going to put feet on t uh, bottom and miles on top. And so... The number that goes with feet is 5,280. The number that goes with miles is one, and my feet will divide out, and I'll be left with miles, which is what I want to be left with. I'm going to deal with all the numbers at the end um, in terms of multiplying. So now, since I have my miles completed, now I'm going to start working on my seconds to hours. And now the thing is, I can't go straight from seconds to hours because... I mean, we don't. We go from seconds to minutes and then minutes to hours. So really, I need to think about getting rid of the seconds. So I'll put that on top. And I compare seconds to minutes. And I have 60 seconds in one minute. However, this doesn't totally get me where I need to be because I need to get to hours. So now if I think about getting rid of the minutes... I can go from minutes to hours because there are 60 minutes in one hour. So then my minutes will cancel out and I'll have hours at the bottom like what I wanted. And so now I just have actually a whole bunch of math to do. And these, like I said, are pretty big numbers. So I'm going to grab my calculator here. And all across the top, I'm going to multiply the 100 the 1 doesn't really matter, so then times the 60, times the 60, so we have 360,000 on top, and then divided by all along the bottom, kind of the 1's don't matter, and so we'll just do 3.1 times 5280 for 16,368, and then we'll just divide them up. Oh, now again, we could talk about lots of different ways to round here. If I were to round to the nearest hundredth, I'd look one past, and I actually wouldn't change anything. I'd leave it 21.99. Um, but if I were to round anywhere else, like to the nearest tenth or to the nearest whole number, that would round up. So we'll just go with that. We'll go 22, and we are in miles per hour. Okay, let's try one more here. Now, converting 63 yards to feet, that's going one to one again. So it's more like these ones up here. So I'm going to start with 63 yards and throw that over one. And we're going to multiply that, hopefully by only one fraction, because hopefully I have a conversion from yards to feet. So if I look over here, I do one yard, three feet. And I want the yards to go away, so I'm going to put that on the bottom and feet go on top. And I have one yard for three feet. So my yards will divide out. I'll have feet left. And really all I'm doing here is 63 times 3. So that is 189. All right. Good luck.